snacks, boys and girls, are awesome. What's up machines and machine freaks? Hope you guys are enjoying your day, having a froggy fresh one. Today is definitely going to be a busy one here at the machine warehouse. The sandblaster will be here any minute. He's already got his air compressor outside, but he's going to do like all our G components today. Uh, the engine will not be powder coated after he sandblasts it. It'll just be painted because uh, this is something that really doesn't get too awfully dirty. It's contained, but I still have to take apart the differential. I still have to like clean up some stuff. And we also have to like tape down some of this tub so sand doesn't get in some crazy places because sand will get into crazy places. So basically I'm gonna start by tearing apart this differential. Then uh, Cole and Jason will be up here to help move stuff towards the sand blaster because he's gonna do it way over in the corner. So. He doesn't get, you know, sand everywhere, but he's definitely in store for a project. That is for sure. Check out what's behind me. Not a Jeep tub. Jason almost whacked him in the face. The Jeep tub is out. We can finally see our American flag again. Hallelujah. We also got more parts in the powder blasting, sand blasting, the box of magic here. I got one of the axles out of the front differential. Now I'm working on this other side here. You can see that there's a, I got, I got a lot of these bolts unloosened. I just gotta get the, uh, after I do that, just gotta get these ball joints out. Cole came up to give us a helping hand, so he's working on his car while we're waiting on the sand blaster. Here's the sand blaster's compressor. He's not here yet, he's a little late, but that's okay. And we got our engine out here in the open, her frame. A couple miscellaneous components that you can't really lose. We have all the big stuff out just for now. And then we have our tub. And this thing, this thing just needs to be sandblasted so we can kind of see what's going on. There's no point in us investing our time to see what the heck's going on. We'll have him just strip what he can off and then we'll just, you know, use the grinder and get the welder out and start refabricating it. But uh, we're ready to go, man. Just that differential. Then we gotta pick up a tent so that we can paint the frame, or prime the frame inside the warehouse. And then uh, go down to town and get some snacks and stuff. Snacks, boys and girls, are awesome. Just came down to my house, we unloaded my bike, Jason centered his, monkey bike is back on the back. This is something we might tinker on in the future, right? Yeah. Maybe we'll, maybe they'll see it later on? I hope so. And, uh, and then he's got some fixing to do on the bike from yesterday. How, how was that? What happened? You went down. You went down. down? Did you hurt yourself? The lights bent like that. Oh, it looks like it wants to fall out now. Yeah, the, the wire will keep it in. Okay, oh, yeah, that's good. Well, it was a pleasure having you, and thanks for inviting me to that event. Yeah. And thanks for uh, thanks for helping me work on the Jeep. Sure. The YouTubers appreciate it too. Leave a leave a like for Jason, and the you know just just hit that like button. The Sega is gonna sit here in the shade for now. We got we got the Jeep to work on right now. I dropped off my Jeep wheels and tires. I got the, the tires removed. And then while I was down there, I was asking about uh, getting rid of them. And uh, one of Cody's, or Chris's workers, Cody, wanted the, the tires, so I gave them to him for his mud truck. So it all works out. I get clean rims, he gets free tires, and everybody does good. Cole and I just got done putting up the tent. This is awesome. We're working inside in the tent so that no overspray can get into the warehouse. It's nice and it's cooler. It's like 10 degrees cooler in here than it is out there. So this is working really good. We have the differentials loaded into the Duramax. As you can see there, and we also have the wheels off the tires. What do you think, Cole? Isn't that a rig? It's a rig, what? huh? This? 
Sandblast. <laughs> oh yeah, that's hell rig. <laughs> the, the YouTubers already have seen this. They they know that this is a rig, and they know that they know for sure that the Duramax is a rig. So the only other rig was the, the Sandblaster. So are we on the same page, buddy? I think so. <laughs> no, yeah. I remember there was a video that Casey Neistat said, "Whatever you think something will take in time, double it." He's absolutely correct. Every single thing that I've ever said that hey, it's going to take an hour. It's going to take two hours. If it's going to take a day. It's going to take two days, sometimes even longer. So for example, today, uh, we just uh, everybody just headed out. Jason headed out a few hours ago, as you guys saw. Uh, Cole and uh, the Sandblaster guy just took off. So it's we ra we're wrapping it up here. Here are the Jeep pieces. So all this is just sandblasted. It's not uh, primed or anything. It's just bare metal. That's what the, uh, the material looks like after it's sandblasted. So we have like the intake, the differentials, uh, engine mounts, uh, the radiator mount for the engine. This is the last piece he got to before he ran out of sand. That's what it originally looks like and then it gets down to stuff like that and it's just nice, no rust, and then you get your uh, your material that you want to put on there whether it's primer, paint, or powder coat and then that, you know, since you have no rust and no moisture, you have something that lasts a lot longer. Once you, you deal with moisture all the time. We live in a world that things deteriorate because of moisture. Uh, when you're welding, that's what a lot of the gas is doing. It's providing an, an atmosphere itself so that, that no water or no oxygen can get in there and get in the way. So tomorrow, I wanna see what this stuff looks like because I'm not going to prime any of this. So this is dirt right here. I wonder if that'll flash a little bit. I'm hoping not because it's. I have no water on the ground in here, so it shouldn't get too wet. Here's our engine. We are gonna have to replace some parts here because that sand just tears stuff apart. I mean, I taped this all up and now it looks like that. Same with the oil filter here. We taped all this up and now it doesn't even have paint on it, so we'll replace that just in case any, any sand got into any weird places. I'm sure it has. The water pump will be replaced. This whole top end is going to be removed because I'm not risking any of the sand from getting into the engine. So I got new valve cover gasket, I have a new head gasket, and then we'll check out all the cylinders while we're in there. The only thing that I primed, and that's the reason why I set this tent up, was the frame because I didn't want this flash rusting because this, this is something that is huge. And if it started flash rusting, there's so much you'd have to re-hit. Where this stuff, if it started to flash for us, you can just hit it again real quick. This thing is just an absolute mammoth. But this thing worked out great. Jason was a huge help. Cole was a huge help. The sand blaster was a huge help. Today worked so well. Such like a well-oiled machine. It's just my, my assumption of only being a day was way off. I mean, we still have this box of stuff to do. The Jeep still looks like this. He didn't get to this. However, I think out of everything, this is gonna go by quicker. I'm not going to say how much time because then it'll be doubled. The cool thing is, is now we have a sandbox. We can play for days. If anybody wants to stop by and play with sand with me, I'm totally kidding, that sounds weird. Then he also got the wheels done, look at them. Yeah, I'm going to do my fuel rail. I bought new fuel injectors, so we're just going to send it just like this. There's no way that any uh, sand can really get in here. We have everything shut off. It's just got a little bit of surface rust. We're even going to powder coat that. First day I documented a lot and, and showed you guys what was going on. The second day I really didn't pick up the camera because there were so many things that were, were needed to be done and uh, I was I was telling people what to do and, and what I needed to do and get these parts ready so that they could be painted or primed or, or sandblasted or powder coated. Just It was a huge fiasco. But now I would like to show you where we are right now. The tent is partless. This thing was filled with parts. You can see all the hooks. Uh, some of the hooks are missing, but there's more hooks right there. Every single hook had a part, and then all these pallets had parts, so just this whole tent was filled of stuff that needed to be primed. Here's one of the parts that we can't take to powder coating, so we'll just paint that. That's sitting on our nice heavy-duty hook. <laughs> and then our Jeep tub is at the front of the tent, and it's primed, as you can see. Now, the top portion is in way better shape than I expected. I thought this was going to blow way through. Uh, like kind of like that, but it didn't happen up here, which is awesome. Just uh, I guess I need to patch that little tiny bit right there. But other than that, it's solid. There's no holes or anything up here. 
Uh, it looks like there is one right there though. The tub gets really bad at the lower portion here, both sides, but that's not a big deal. We'll patch that up. That'll be not a problem at all. We have a welder, we have some ingenuity, we have some fabricating skills. We can make that happen. The engine is on this stand, but you're gonna have to tune in for the next 3D Machines production to see that thing. Now the plan is to get everything soaking on this thing with penetrating oil, penetrating fluid, and then just let it sit for a little bit, start taking some stuff apart, like the roll bar here, so that way, you know, when we start doing some grinding and welding, we're not burning this thing up, damaging the paint, the existing paint that's already on it. And well, keep it in better shape than it would be if I just started cutting at it. I'm so excited that I don't have to deal with rust anymore. That's a huge plus. I'm gonna warn you now, if you do anything like this in the time period that we did it, you're going to destroy your shop, garage, warehouse, because things just move incredibly quick and uh, there's no time for cleanup. I'll see all you machines, machine freaks, very, very soon. Stay froggy fresh.